Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here today with another writing video. I've got a really quick video today because I have a really easy and quick tip for structuring your short stories. A couple of videos ago, I did a video on telling and why telling is actually a good thing to use in your writing and not something to be afraid of. One of the points that I talked about was using telling as thesis statement. And this is something that a lot of people responded to really positively in the comments. It was just kind of something I mentioned offhandedly and a lot of people were like, oh, that's a really interesting point. I never thought about telling being a kind of thesis that you then explore through showing through the subsequent piece. And I wanted to kind of explore that idea a little further um, because there's a reason I phrased it that way. And it's because I've been thinking about a certain way of structuring short stories lately that mirrors simplistic argumentative essay structure. There isn't really a standard way of structuring a short story and so for a lot of people when they're getting into short fiction, especially if they're very structural writers and maybe in a novel they would implement a plot structure, they would follow Save the Cat or something like that, they kind of want a similar type of structure they can use in short fiction. But short stories are so short that structure I mean, they have structure, but they kind of have internal structure. In past videos, I've talked about how the point, the structure of a short story is essentially just a connection of two points. You're connecting an inciting incident with the story's climax, and you just have to get there in the most co like cohesive way possible. You can't really apply those big plot structures like the hero's journey to short stories. They're just too short. But recently, I had a little bit of a thought on a potential way to explain short story structure in a really clear way. And so I thought I would share it with you guys. Now, this obviously does not apply to every short story. Like I said, short stories are so short that they almost don't can't follow rules. It's like they don't have enough pieces for those pieces to settle into a consistent shape. Even though it's counterintuitive because you're like, okay, but novels are so much longer, so shouldn't they have a lot more room to follow different structures? Because they're so big that the gravity of them kind of naturally tends to fit them into a more standard structure. Not always they're novels that do you know different things with structure but generally you see like a beginning middle end kind of uh, general arc short stories don't really have that kind of gravity they kind of can just do whatever they want and it's like a flash in the pan and you just do what you need to do in that story so this definitely isn't like a universal thing but i had this thought recently and I think that it is actually a really easy way of looking at short story structure. When you were a kid, I don't really know how old, but at some point you may have been taught this structure for writing an argumentative essay. Maybe not, just this was my education, but if you didn't, I'm gonna explain it right now, so that's okay. And this structure for writing argumentative essays is so simple, it was like the first essay structure that I was ever taught in school, and it goes like this. First paragraph is an introduction where you introduce the topic that you're going to be discussing and briefly, briefly kind of overview the different arguments you're going to make. At the end of that introductory paragraph, you have a thesis statement, which is a statement that concretely states the argument that you are making. Then you have your body paragraphs. And usually as like a kid, we would have three body paragraphs and then like, you know, you could obviously have way more arguments, but I remember in like the first essays I ever wrote in school, it was always three body paragraphs. And in each body paragraph, you would uh, go into detail on one of your points behind your argument. And then in your conclusion paragraph, now that you've given evidence to support your thesis statement in each paragraph, you kind of summarize the argument and why it's important. And this is an essay structure that I haven't thought about in years. Recently, I, I've talked about this in a few videos, I really kind of lost my way with short fiction. I forgot how short stories worked. And I read a lot of short stories, and one thing that I noticed in a lot of short stories that didn't really work for me is that they had no thesis statement. They never solidified their concept. And so I would get halfway through the story and be like, what is this about? And I kind of realized that a lot of good short stories include what is essentially a thesis statement. And this isn't the same as the inciting incident. It is a thesis about the concept of the story. And I kind of realized, wait, if short stories can have thesis statements, maybe a short story kind of follows in a lot of cases, not always, but can follow this elementary school argumentative essay structure. So in a short story, obviously it's not exactly the same, but if we were going to take this basic essay structure and apply it to a short story, it would look like this. So we have the introductory paragraph and paragraphs in this case are going to kind of be equivalent to scenes, but it could also be slightly larger plot beats. Like sometimes you might, a beat might be like two scenes or something. Um, not exact. It's not like it's going to exactly be cut with scene breaks. It's not as clean, obviously, as in an essay, because in an essay you're being very upfront and it follows a clear structure, whereas a short story is a creative work, it's more fluid. We're going to generally equate the paragraphs to the scenes here. 
So in the first scene, you would open with an inciting incident. Your introductory scene has two parts. So at the start of your introductory scene, you have the inciting incident. It's an important piece in most works of fiction. It's essentially the event that kickstarts the story. It's the event that sets the story into motion. Without this event, the story doesn't happen. In short stories, a lot of the time it's quite subtle. It could be the character deciding to go somewhere, it could be the character deciding to meet someone, it could be, you know, the arrival of a character, whatever it is, it is the event that kind of says motion is happening now. We have, we have taken this character out of a state of stasis and we've put them in a state of motion. So that would happen at the beginning of your first scene. And then at the end of your first scene, you would have the thesis statement. In this case, our thesis statement is essentially a statement of what the concept of the story is. Recently, I've realized how helpful this is to have in a story because I felt it was lacking from a lot of stories that I was reading. And I realized maybe I should start putting this in my own stories. I should start putting essentially a thesis statement, which is a sentence that kind of says, this is what is going to, this story is about and kind of outlines what my main character's external goal is and why it's important. The most recent story that I wrote is about identity theft. It's about a woman stealing the identity of a missing girl who she realizes looks a lot like her. The end of the first scene ends with a sentence that basically says, not in these exact words, but it's essentially a sentence that in a more artful way says, now I'm going to become this girl, with a sentence that basically says, for the rest of the story, this is what you can expect from a structural standpoint. Then we get to our body paragraphs. In an argumentative essay, each body paragraph has kind of an argument that relates back to, supports your thesis. It's a little different, obviously, in a short story because here we have like a cause and effect chain, not just like separate arguments. We can't just necessarily say, okay, it's like having three arguments. We're gonna have three scenes and each one is gonna like argue a point about the character. But if we think about these argumentative body paragraphs, each being kind of a scene, and I mean, obviously you could have as many or as few as you need, but each one is going to build on that central thesis in a concrete way. So each scene is going to add something concrete to the, to the development of that thesis. And then eventually we're going to get to the end of the story, the conclusion paragraph. In this case, it would be the story's climax. Now we can think, okay, we've gone through these argumentative body paragraphs of the story. Now we can actually capitalize all that. Those events are going to reach a tipping point. There's going to be some kind of change, you know? We're either going to have a change in our understanding of the character, all that potential is going to be realized, the character may change, there's going to be a choice made, there's going to be some kind of movement. And there are many, many different ways that that movement can take shape. I think having a character make a choice is a really good one if you can make it happen. There's going to be some kind of decision point, turning point, tipping point in the character, in our understanding of the character, and it's going to have necessitated the buildup of those arguments, right? Now that we've gone through this developing plot, where we've developed kind of these different points about our character, now they reach a tipping point. That kind of summarizes, it cohesively ties together everything that was said as the story developed. Does this work for every single short story? Uh, absolutely not. It definitely does not work for every single short story. The meaning of like a body paragraph or argumentative paragraph would also depend a lot. And the way these pieces work together could be different. It depends on the, the goal of your story. But I've been really liking this as a really simple way to see short story structure because I think it's a structure we're familiar with because we were taught it in like an academic context and it's such a clean, clear cut structure. It just really relies on that idea of having a thesis, supporting your thesis, and then restating your thesis, but with added meaning now that we've gone through this development. You know, it's the same in the story. We're gonna kind of have a thesis about this character. We're gonna go through development with this character that gives meaning to that thesis and explores that thesis. And then at the end of the story, there's gonna be a change that kind of shows us the real impact of that thesis, but it was only possible now that the character has gone through those events. They needed to go through that series of events to kind of make us see that thesis in a new light and see why it was important. You know, at the beginning, we're gonna say, this is what we're gonna explore in the character. And we're gonna explore it in the character. And then we're gonna go at the end, oh, you just saw them change as a result of that thesis. Now you understand why that thesis was important. I mean, there are a lot of differences, like they're completely different forms. I think one of the main differences is that in a essay, from the beginning, you say, this is my argument. This is why it's important. This is why you should pay attention. In a short story, you open and you kind of go, this is my argument. And then you follow the argument as it develops through a narrative. And then at the end, you kind of say, now you can see why that was important. 
because we were led to a point of change that made us see why this was an important, crucial development we had to undergo with the character in order to say something or see something that couldn't be said at the beginning. But through going through this journey, we were able to see something and see why that, that thesis of this concept has depth and has meaning. So that is all for today's video little thought experiment that I had recently that I thought I would share with you because I think it's a helpful way of seeing short stories that has helped me as I've been trying to get back into writing short stories after I kind of lost touch with them for a bit. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.